In our previous videos, we talked about operational amplifiers with negative feedback. But if there's negative feedback, one could ask if there's positive feedback as well. And indeed, positive feedback in operational amplifier circuits is used in electronics. So let's talk about operational amplifier circuits with positive feedback. Positive feedback means that a portion of the output voltage is added to the input voltage. To see what happens, we consider a loop like this one. We assume that all voltages are zero volts. The differential gain AD is 2 and the feedback coefficient K is 1. So zero is added to zero and nothing is happening right now. But once we give the input voltage a light nudge, we trigger a chain reaction. Let us see what happens if we increase the input voltage from 0 to 1 volts, for example. The output voltage can be described by this formula. Where V out nu is the output voltage at exactly this time instance. And V out old is the output just a little bit before that. But in the next instance, the output voltage keeps rising. This process continues and V out is approaching infinity. This would be true even if we just apply a non-zero input voltage for a very short time. At the beginning, this does not make much sense as the output voltage would just skyrocket towards either plus or minus infinity. But operational amplifiers can only provide a limited output voltage. This means the output voltage only reaches a certain minimum and maximum value. Let's assume that our operational amplifier can provide plus minus 5 volt at its output and it's currently stuck at plus 5 volts. Let us apply a negative input voltage of minus 1 volt and recalculate our output voltage to see what happens. As we can see, an input voltage of minus 1 volt is not enough to change the output voltage. Now we apply a negative input voltage of minus 5.1 volts and recalculate our output voltage again. In the first instance, we get minus 0.2 volts, which gives in the next instance minus 5 volts. We just managed to switch the output voltage by applying an appropriate input voltage. We do not even have to apply this input voltage all the time, just a very short amount of time is sufficient. This configuration is able to detect short changes of the input voltage beyond a certain limit. It behaves like the trigger of an oscilloscope, which we explained in one of our other videos. Hence, these circuits are called Schmidt triggers, honoring the inventor. Building a Schmidt trigger with operational amplifiers is quite easy. The circuits are disguisingly similar to the operational amplifier circuits of our previous videos. But this time, the output voltage is fed into the non-inverting input. Let's focus on the non-inverting Schmidt trigger first. A very convenient way to describe the behavior of a Schmidt trigger is to plot the transfer function, which gives the output voltage as a function of the input voltage. For a non-inverting Schmidt trigger, the transfer function looks like this. The transfer function shows a hysteresis. This means if we start with the minimum input voltage, go to the maximum input voltage and back again, we take two different paths. From an output voltage of V out min, we can reach V out max by applying an input voltage of above V up. But if we want to reset the output voltage to V out min, simply reducing the input voltage below V up isn't enough. We have to decrease the input voltage all the way down to V down. Only once V in drops below V down, does the output voltage switch to V out min. But how do we get the trigger levels V up and V down? Let's calculate this non-inverting Schmidt trigger circuit as an example. As a starting condition, we choose the output voltage as minus 5 volts. Now we want to derive V up. In order to cause the operational amplifier to switch, we need to apply an input voltage that results in a differential voltage Vd of 0 volts. We set the limit of Vd equals 0 volts for our calculations. 
Be aware that this Vd equals zero volts is in no way related to our previous rules for negative feedback circuits. It just happens to be the exact same requirements to determine the trigger levels. While Vd equals zero volts is true for ideal negative feedback circuits all the time, a Schmidt trigger shows Vd equals zero volts only in the instant before switching. So be careful there. Back to our example, we require Vd to be zero volts to toggle the output of our Schmidt trigger. We also know that the output voltage is currently minus 5 volts. The rest is just a simple resistor circuit. The current IR2 equals V out min minus Vd divided by R2. As Vd is zero volts at the trigger point, we can simplify the equation. As the current into the non-inverting input is a property of the operational amplifier, I plus equals zero amps is still valid. Thus, the currents through the resistors are equal and we can determine the voltage drop at R1 by this expression. Thus, we get this equation for the trigger level. If we use the numbers from the example, we get the following results for the trigger level. We proceed similarly for the second trigger level, but this time we start with an output voltage of plus 5 volts. This means we can plot the transfer function of our circuit. This is fine, but what if we need a transfer function not centered around 0 volts? Maybe something like this. V down is now positive, but the formula only allows for negative values. So how can we achieve a positive V down? What we need is a little help from a second voltage source, VH, which we connect to the inverting input of our operational amplifier. The calculation of the trigger levels V up and V down is basically the same as before. We focus on the resistive network again, but this time we add VH to the middle terminal. In the moment of switching, Vd is 0 volts and the middle contact is at a potential Vh. We calculate V down first to see if it really can become positive now. The rest is just as before. We calculate IR2, which then flows on through R1. A short cosmetic makeover results in the following equation. Now V down can be both positive and negative. The same is true for V up, by the way, which can be calculated by the following equation. As a small example, let's design a non-inverting Schmidt trigger with V down equals 1 volt and V up equals 3 volts. The maximum and minimum output voltages are plus minus 5 volts. The missing pieces are the two resistors R1 and R2 and the voltage VH. We already derived the equations for the trigger levels. Now we have three unknown quantities, but only two equations. That's a problem. But a closer look on the equations reveal that only the relation of the resistors is important and not their absolute values. This means we just pick one of the resistors. Let's select R1 equals 1K. The rest is just a little bit of math. The second resistor has to be 5K and the voltage equals 1.67 volts. The approach in determining the trigger levels and designing the circuit is the same for the inverting Schmidt trigger. But how so? Well, let's pretend for a moment we would recalculate the inverting Schmidt trigger all over again. We remind ourselves that the voltage source applies the input voltage. Does the circuit seem familiar? No? How about now? We end up with the exact same circuit as before. An inverting and a non-inverting Schmidt trigger are the very same circuit if we swap VH and V in. Of course, we have to repeat this process for the equations from above. So for each of the two equations, we swap VH with either V up or V down. We solve again for the trigger levels to finish the inverting Schmidt trigger. And we could also plot the transfer function of the inverting Schmidt trigger. 
Schmidt triggers are operational amplifier circuits with positive feedback. They come as either inverting or non-inverting variants. But as we have been clever in our investigations, we found that both circuits are essentially the same. The transfer function shows a hysteresis, which means that the turn-on trigger level and the turn-off trigger level are not at the same input voltage. This allows to detect even very short events in the input signal as Schmidt triggers have a memory-like behavior. Positive feedback seems like an explosive idea at first, but allows us to detect changes of the input voltage beyond selectable trigger levels. Schmidt triggers are widely used for the level detection or to increase the noise immunity of a digital circuit. Speaking of the world of digital design, the Schmidt trigger is also called a bistable multivibrator and can be used to implement a simple oscillator circuit, the so-called relaxation oscillator. But this will be the subject of another video. I'm Patrick with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you've learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about Operation Amplifier circuits, we highly recommend The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill, as well as Elektronische Schaltungstechnik by members of our institute.